Lesson 11.8, Volume of Rectangular Prisms. We're going to talk about base area and height, and this is 11.9 in the 2012 copyright. Back in video 11.3, we learned about quadrilaterals, and rectangles are quadrilaterals, and so are squares, and squares are considered rectangles because they fit the requirements for a rectangle. And the base of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. And we know that area is measured in square units or units squared with the little two exponent. And that the area of a rectangle can be found by multiplying the length and the width. Volume is measured in cubic units or units cubed. We use a little three exponent. When we build a prism, and add each layer of cubes, we're adding a third dimension, height. And since we're counting the amount of cubes, volume is measured in cubic units or units cubed. So this rectangular prism has a height of three units. Area is the number of square units we need to cover a two-dimensional surface, a flat surface. We use length and width to find area. Volume is the number of cubic units we need to fill a three-dimensional space. We use length, width, and height. We can find the volume of a prism in cubic units by multiplying the number of square units in the base shape by the number of layers, its height. And this prism is composed of, that means made up of, 18 unit cubes. We have six and six more, that's 12, and six more, that's 18. And it's got three layers. The volume of this prism increases by six units for each layer that is added. We've got a base of six, and we multiply that by three layers, that gives us 18. See? We can complete a table of values with sequences and their relating rule. We did that back in video 9.5, and that's linked in the description if you missed, missed it. So we have height in layers, and that's one sequence. So we're going to go one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers. And this is the volume in cubic units. One layer is three times two. That's six. That means two layers is 12. Three layers is 18. Our relating rule is multiply by 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 6 is 18. 4 times 6 is 24. 5 times 6 is 30, and so on. And we can find the volume of the prism by multiplying the number of units in its base by its height. We do the base area, 3 times 2, times the height. It's three layers. We have a volume of 18 cubic units. So for two dimensions, we just do length times width. That would give us a 1 times a 1, which equals 1, so it's 1 centimeter square. That's the area. For three dimensions, we do length times width times height. That would be 1 times 1 times 1. It's still 1, but now it's 1 centimeter cubed. We use a three exponent, and that's the volume. In this rectangular prism, it's telling us that each cube is one centimeter cubed. The base area, we count along the bottom or the top because either one can be the base. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the width here is three and 8 times 3. That means the base area is 24. We count the height, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We multiply 24 times 5. And that gives us a volume of 120 centimeters cubed. Because these are each 1 centimeter cubed, our volume is 120 centimeters cubed. We can find the volume of a rectangular prism by multiplying base times height. And actually, the formula you'll see as you get into middle school is V for volume is equal to 
base and height, and the variables are next to each other. When variables are next to each other, that means we multiply their values. And that's a formula for volume, and we'll talk about that more in the next video. We can also use length, width, and height to find the volume of a rectangular prism. So in the previous one, we did the base area, 8 times 3, which is 24, and we multiplied the base area, 24, times the height to get the volume. Well, the base area is made of the length and the width, so we can do 8 times 3 times the height, 5, and we'll get 120 centimeters cubed. That would be volume is equal to LWH, which stands for length, width, and height, and they're close to each other, next to each other, so that means we multiply their values. For this rectangular prism, it says each cube is equal to one inch on each edge. So that means it's one inch, one inch on the side, and one inch tall, one inch high. We count one, two, three, four, five for length, so that's five inches for length. We count one, two, three, four units for its width, and because they're each an inch, that's four inches. And we count one, two, three for its height. So that would be three inches for its height. We multiply five times four, which is 20. 20 times three is 60. So its volume is 60 inches cubed because these are inches. Each cube is one inch on its, for its length on that edge, an inch on that edge for its width, and an inch high on that edge. So it's a one inch cubed, each cube. When we double the measure of each cube edge, we go from one cubic inch per cube to eight cubic inches per cube. The volume becomes eight times greater. Now think about that. When we double the measure of the cube, so now each cube is equal to a two inch edge. This was one inch for this little tiny edge of this cube like this. Now we're gonna say they're each two inches. That means we have two inches times two inches times two inches. That's eight. That means if each of these little edges is a two, we would have two, four, six, eight, ten for the length, two, four, six, eight for the width, and two, four, six for the height. We multiply 10 times eight, that's 80. And we multiply 80 times six, that would be 480 inches cubed. We went from a one inch edge and our volume was 60 inches cubed. We went to a two inch edge and doubled it, but our volume was eight times greater as 480 inches cubed. The length of the rectangular prism is three centimeters. The width is three centimeters. So the area of the base is three times three. It's nine centimeters square. That's the area of the base. The height is four centimeters. So the volume of the prism is nine times four. It's 36 centimeter cubed. We use a three exponent. So the area of the base uses a two exponent because we multiply two dimensions, length times width, length and width. The volume uses a three exponent because we multiply three dimensions, length, width, and height. The length of the rectangular prism is two inches. The width is two inches. So the area of the base is four inches squared. It's two times two. The height is five inches, so the volume of the prism is 20 inches cubed. We do four times five. If we double one of the dimensions, just one of them, the volume will double. So here we have a two for a length, a two for a width, and a five for a height, and we had a volume of 20 inches cubed. If we double the length to a four, we now have 
4 times 2 times 5. That's 8 times 5. That's 40. It doubled. We doubled the length and the volume doubled. If we double the width, and we have a 2-inch length, and now we have a 4-inch width, and it's still 5 tall, we do 2 times 4, which is 8 times 5. That's 40 inches cubed. We doubled the width, and we doubled the volume. And if we double the height, we have a 2-inch length, a 2-inch width, but now we have a 10-inch height. 2 times 2 is 4, times 10 is 40. So if we double one of the dimensions, the volume will double. You can try doubling one of the dimensions to see what will happen. And you can try doubling two of the dimensions or even three of the dimensions to see what will happen. Make sure that you're using the correct exponent. For area, we use a little two exponent because we're doing length times width. For volume, we use a little three exponent because we have three measures, length, width, and height. In our next lesson, 11.9, we're going to apply the volume formulas. We're not going to count cubes anymore. We're actually going to multiply measures and use the volume formulas. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope you'll join us next time. Bye.